YouTube, bud. How you doing? Good. So, uh, what's your YouTube channel name? Uh, Rust Belt Mechanic. In from Ohio. Bedliner Duramax here. Bedliner Duramax. Yep. Can you believe it? I didn't actually have to put those on, thankfully, but they're awesome. They're really awesome. And I love this right here. You don't have to worry about scratching it. None. Work on all my LBZ Duramax, same as his. Mine's a little bit more stock. Great. We're getting her done though. <laughs> <laughs> That's thinking with the dipstick. Yeah, we won't even bother checking the clutch clearance because the clutches are smoked. All right. Carnage. I like it. Uh, okay. Get that uh, camera over this way. Sure. So yes, in fact, Kyle, Rust Belt Mechanic, a good friend of mine, is selling his LBZ Duramax for $50,000. Stay tuned guys, we're gonna explain what's going on and why he's asking so much money for it. But before we get started, I have to start up this power stroke. I'm gonna be very interested to see how this power stroke has held up over the winter after starting this thing. So let's do that right now. So it's basically sat outside all winter, unfortunately. Hopefully this year I can come up with a better solution for it. I want it to sit in a building. I mean, this truck's only got 45,000 miles on it. It's a 6.0 power stroke. This was a hammer's rig back in the day. And we're the new caretakers of it. It still smells like my dad in here. You know, we need to do a 6.4 power stroke starter on this thing because this starter is worn. Yeah. Getting in here is the fun part. <gasps> nice hoodie. Thanks. I support my We still my have man. some of those in stock, don't we? Yes. Yeah, and definitely. If you live you know. anywhere in the northern states where it's supposed <laughs> to be spring and it's snowing, Go ahead and grab you one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd let that glow for a while. Uh huh. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let it, let it sit for a second. I told you, it's been sitting a while. We're gonna mess up the starter. That's gonna be one of the first upgrades we do, guys, on this truck is a starter. After we did the Ryan's Diesel Service Turbo, um, I think that's all we've done with the truck. Other than the, the um, Rough Country lift kit, of course. Forgot about that. But yeah. Let's try it again. All right, let's do it. <laughs> don't know we actually inherited this truck from my father-in-law when he passed away so every time that truck fires up my wife always talks about how it reminds her of dad we're gonna let that truck warm up take it down the road just kind of get some of the oil moving it's so bad to let diesel sit guys but unfortunately we're kind of at the mercy of not really having a building to store it with everything else i got going on we're going to be paying attention to that 6-0 here in the near future i got some other really cool plans for it started guys if you want to support the channel you want to upgrade your vehicle definitely check out my website I'll leave that link in the description we sell so many things tie rods air dog lift pumps definitely some of the best on the market you know PPE deep transmission oil pans as well as the engine oil pans this is a new product that we have on the website it's high capacity 5 micron filtration oil filters for the Duramaxes as well and of course the key tags I'm going to ship these directly to you very next business day so if you guys want to pick up one of those definitely do that now load it up in the comments do you think he's crazy for trying to sell this truck for fifty thousand dollars and I'm going to go ahead and explain to you guys exactly what I'm thinking. So, for example, somebody just offered me $40,000 for my LBZ Duramax. They reached out to me on my Instagram. Kind of laughed, shook my head. I'm not going to sell it for forty grand. i am not going to sell it for sixty grand. Of course, you guys know I have multiple trucks, but I have a YouTube channel. I like to 
have lots of trucks so I can install cool performance parts on them and make YouTube videos. That's kind of the reason why I do this. Now when I say LBZ, it basically means the type of engine that's inside of this Silverado. It's an 06 to 07 and by far one of the most sought after diesels in the industry when it comes to a GM pickup truck. So the way I look at it, it's kind of like a classic car in a way, almost like a split window Corvette. Very rare to find, and they're just going for top dollar. Now this is the pickup truck that I've always wanted, and I have it, so if I was to sell it, well one, I'd be kicking myself, and two, you know how hard it would be to replace something like that? So that's kind of the reasoning why I'd never want to sell it. And this thing started my channel, let's be honest. I have a cold air intake, all HSP piping, some of the best in the industry. I have the cold side intercooler pipe, I have the hot side intercooler pipe, I have a Ryan's Diesel Service 68 millimeter turbo as well. 60 over Bitterroot diesel injectors in there. Also running the fast 150 GPH lift pump, which by the way, I'm probably gonna switch that one out and I'll do another video on what's going on there. The 70 inch traction bars. This thing's sitting on a nice set of 22 by 14 instigator anthem wheels and they're wrapped with a brand new set of Nitto Recon grapplers. I was actually one of the first to receive a set of these. I love them. They're super quiet and they ride amazing. There's no lift blocks in the back. It's actually four inch lift springs and those are made by Deaver. I have the kryptonite upper control arms. I have the PPE tie rods. Which I'm not saying the PPE tie rods are the best. Actually, I think Kryptonite make the best products. I ran these tie rods for probably about five years now. I've never been easy on this pickup and I have not messed up the tie rod. So kudos to that company. I mean, I can keep going on and on and on. I mean, the rear end is built by Kodiak Truck. We have a Kodiak Truck transfer case. Also, the guys at Kodiak Truck, Mark Bendler himself, actually refreshed my transmission with all PPE internals. And then don't forget the Boost Auto Parts tow mirrors, but I mean, there's a bunch of stuff done to this vehicle. I probably listed about half of the things that I've already done to it, but let's be honest here. All those parts and all the cool flashy looking stuff, it shouldn't reflect price. You're really not gonna get the value into your vehicle for what you put into it. It always depreciates. So let's just say I got you know, a $6,000 transmission. Well, that doesn't really mean much. It really doesn't reflect the actual Blue Book or NADA value of the pickup truck. But in today's economy, with the back order on new pickup trucks, you have to order them. You have to wait months to receive them. Well, that's exactly why the market's been so inflated with used vehicles. You don't live too far from the Flint truck assembly plant. And man, I'm telling you what, right off I-69, I mean, we're talking hundreds of thousands of pickup trucks sitting in fields, just waiting on computer chips. It's nuts, man. So years back when I started my YouTube channel, I set up a truck meet at Perry Auto Sales in Michigan, but I was very surprised to see how many people showed up off of my smaller YouTube channel. It was very humbling. But there was a guy that pulled up to the truck meet with this mint Silverado Duramax. It was super nice. He drove all the way up from Southern Ohio, and that was Kyle. Kyle started a YouTube channel called Rust Belt Mechanic, and he was making videos on his truck as well. So we kind of hit it off, you know, we made some videos together. But one thing I've learned about social media and YouTube is I've met some just incredible people. And Kyle is definitely one of them. He's one of my closest buddies. So it's kind of sad to see this vehicle go. So again, let me know in the comments if you think $50,000 is nuts for this truck. So off the top of my head, this is what we've done to this vehicle. It seems like anytime he does a major upgrade on his pickup, we usually get together and we document this stuff. So this dude is extremely meticulous. Everything has to be perfect. He's one of those guys. Nothing can be out of place. Everything has to be spotless. So this dude took this truck that he bought from California, and I mean no expense spared. The guy's got compound turbos, both from Ryan's Diesel Service. He's got a compound kit from HSP Diesel, which unfortunately they don't make kits anymore. He's got a fully built transmission, which we just did a video on in Wisconsin at Kodiak Truck. He also did something pretty unique. I gotta give him credit for this one. He had the entire vehicle Raptor lined. You would think that that would ruin the vehicle, but it was done right and it looks amazing. But the vehicle's been through a lot of changes. As you guys can see, it's got the big lift kit on it. It's got the BDS. I think it's an eight inch lift kit. It's sitting on 22 by 12s and it's got 37s on it. He's also got the amp steps on it. Of course, this truck's been studded. It's got a five inch exhaust. Now I gotta be completely upfront with you. If I had the money, I would buy this truck. It is super nice. He's actually got it for sale. I'll leave a link in the description at the dealership that he works at. They're actually selling it there. I actually didn't ask him what truck he's gonna replace that with. It's probably gonna be a gasser. But what I can tell you guys, just do a quick search on how much these used trucks are going for. It'll blow your mind. But what I'll tell you guys, $50,000, yeah, he's nuts. You know, I mean, 50 grand. Three, four years ago, people would be definitely thinking he's nuts. But in today's economy, I guarantee you somebody's gonna pay 50 grand for that pickup. I'm gonna follow up with him on that too. I'm really curious to see if that thing's gonna go for list price. But with that being said, let's have a conversation with this guy and see what he says. No longer friends. Oh, I, I'm sorry, man. $50,000, huh? 
the how the, with how the market's going right now, one with this truck being kind of crazy, and two, this truck being built how it is, there's not a whole lot of option on the market with those things. And I think it, you know, I think it's a pretty good price. It's it's a little on the higher end, but for what it is, I think it's pretty close. No, I agree. I mean, who else is going to find a compound turboed LBZ Duramax that clean? <laughs> Lifted. I mean, put it this way: I have already gotten three people message me today uh-huh. asking if I would take the compound turbo kit off of it to sell them. Aside from the truck, yeah, like you're gonna mess with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not so much. The reason I kind of did what I did was I, I don't have anything that I really 100 percent need it for anymore. You know, I had before because we did a lot of camping. We pulled a trailer, or we had that big side-by-side I did on the channel. We took that all over the place. I've gotten rid of those bigger things, and recently I just bought the wife a newer 2019 uh, Ram 1500 Limited. Nice. Uh, so I've got a truck to be able to pull the small trailers and take things to the damn back. You know, truck stuff. You need to get some furniture. You know, you have a truck for it. And then also recently I just bought a tractor. So things that need pulled and yanked across the property, I don't need a big truck for that anymore. So it's just kind of gone obsolete in my situation. And with the channel going how it is, I've I've gotten to the point on that specific build where if I was going to take that one any far, it would be stuff that would be like, hey, we need to put five to seven thousand dollars in custom bumpers or. Hey, you need to build a have a fully built bottom end. You know, it's like twenty twenty five grand, mm-hmm. and that's just beyond what I really wanted to do on the channel right now. Do you really think someone's gonna buy this truck for fifty grand, though? Uh, I think it's within you know five grand or so of being pretty close to what I'm really wanting to get for it. But who knows? We'll see how things go. People like with what it's been done. You know, sometimes on the market, you get to see some of these compound turbo Duramaxes come up. Not too often are they low mileage, and not too often are they, you know, built with the right lift kit or, you know, a 100-gallon fuel transfer system or fully built trans transfer case, axles. It's very, very rare to find a whole package deal truck. Make sure you subscribe to Kyle, Rust Belt Mechanic, because I'm pretty sure he will document you know, sort of the uh, selling process of the truck or maybe just keep you guys updated if he sold it or not. I I think it'd be good for you guys to follow that one as well as my channel because I will definitely get back with you guys on this. But Rust Belt, I do appreciate you being on the channel. Good luck with everything. Thanks, I appreciate it. I want to hear from you guys what you think. Would you sell your truck in today's market? I've sort of explained what I've seen out here, but I'm almost guaranteeing you that he's going to sell that thing for asking price. So I will follow up with Kyle. And definitely check them out on YouTube. Now, would I sell one eventually? I probably will because realistically, I don't need all these vehicles. Again, it's just for YouTube content and to educate you guys. That's why I do this. The main ones that I have is my GMC, my 2018, which is an emissions compliant pickup truck. I use it to haul all my vehicles to the shows. And I also use it as a daily driver. So that one means something. And it also has a gooseneck ball. So I pull my gooseneck with it. The LBZ I will probably never get rid of only because it was the thing that started my channel and like I explained to you guys, this pickup right here is iconic to me. It's one of those that are really hard to find. So I probably wouldn't get rid of that and of course the Wife Max, everybody loves the Wife Max. I'd love to hear your guys' feedback and definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram. It's at truck underscore master 07 if you guys want to see some cool behind the scenes footage. But that's it, we'll see you on the next one. Stay tuned. So in today's video, I've been getting a lot of people asking me questions about how to convert a two-wheel drive to a four-wheel drive. In this particular case, we're actually talking about an 01 to a, I would say a 2010 GM pickup truck. I'm gonna go ahead and get this 2004 LB7 Duramax on the hoist and explain to you guys sort of what parts you're gonna need in order to do the conversion. Mostly more of an example, that's why I have this truck on the hoist. But more importantly, we're gonna head over to North Prairie, Wisconsin and head over to the shop at Kodiak Truck where they remanufacture transfer cases. So if you guys are interested, definitely check them out. Leave that link in the description. So I'm gonna have Mark explain with bare chassis on how he did the conversion with a lift kit. And also guys, let me know in the comments, would it be worth your trouble? Would it be worth the hassle for you guys if you have a two wheel drive pickup truck to convert it to a four wheel drive after you guys watch the ending of this video? So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive right into it.
Now that we have this beast off the ground, let's go ahead and explain to you guys the four wheel drive components that you will need in order to convert that two wheel drive pickup. If you get underneath the truck, you have your front differential, which is going to actuate that drive shaft right there. So if you want to look at it like this, you're going to need all the mounts that connect to this front differential. For example, this bushing right here that connects to this frame mount right here, which is actually welded to the frame, okay? And then you guys have this cross member going across, and then of course attaching here, and then you have this little knuckle right here. We're gonna call this like a dog bone, okay? Um, it's gonna be connected here, and it's actually gonna be bolted on the other side of the frame, as you guys can see. Now this bracket is what holds up this front differential. You're gonna have this part on the passenger side, and then if we come on over here to the driver's side here, we have this bracket as well, which is connected to the top bushing of that front differential. Let me back out. You guys can see okay so driver side and passenger side brackets need to be cut off and welded on your two-wheel drive frame you're also going to need a transfer case now moving on to the two-wheel drive allison you can either convert it to a four-wheel drive allison which we'll explain here later in this video or you could just get a four-wheel drive allison trans of course you're going to need the transfer case in the rear this one is actually built by kodiak truck you're going to need the rear drive shaft of course because your drive shaft currently in that pickup is actually going to be a little bit longer you're going to need a shorter one. Any wiring going to this transfer case, you're going to have to switch it over to your two-wheel drive pickup truck. So that's kind of how that would work. And then after that, remove your transmission control module, get that shipped out, get it reprogrammed. So it will accept for low. So that's basically the gist of it. This, this was a two-wheel drive. So because I did the lift kit, I didn't have to worry about welding any brackets in on the driver's side frame rail to mount the differential because when you do the lift kit, those brackets all drop and you use the brackets that are on the cross members for the lift kit and everything else. But what you do need to put in is this piece down in here, which is, I just call it like a dog bone. It just goes forward to back and it comes through the side of the frame here. Once you get that mounted, you're good to go. You'll have the mount on this side now for your differential uh, to get that up in there. And you guys can see the lift, it's got the extension, the drop down, but you would have this directly up underneath there, no problem, it would bolt right in. And then we just put the CV shafts in and uh, put four wheel drive hubs on the front. As far as the uh, cross member goes, again, I lucked out because I did a lift kit, but otherwise you get the factory um, four wheel drive cross member. And you, a lot of times what guys do, what we've done in the past, because Ryan's actually 03 Duramax was two wheel drive, we converted it with all OE pieces, we just got a cut off stub from a junkyard. And it can be from any 2500 HD, it doesn't need to be from a Duramax. And then that gives you all the pieces and parts you need to do the conversion on it. And then uh, just got a, a drive shaft from a Duramax for the front, and uh, took our two wheel drive trans, converted it over, put a four wheel drive output shaft and tail on it, that accepted our transfer case. And then uh, you can see our drive shaft in there, which is from a Duramax. You see the aluminum spacer in there, that's because of the lift kit and everything else. So it's not that bad of a job to do. We've done a couple of them. Um, we do not do them here in the shop. They are time consuming. We don't have the time to do them, but um, it's not that bad of a project to do. And if you do do one and you're gonna go stock height, once you get this bracket in, you can take a dummy differential, put it up in there, and then all you have to worry about is welding in your other two brackets, which one's gonna be up behind the steering box down in here. Um, and again, if you got a bunch of that stuff pulled out of the way, you can slide right up there with a MIG welder. You got the differential there, you weld that bracket in, and then there's gonna be one more on the back downside here where you see your mount, but that's on our lift kit um, right now. But that there, there's another mount that comes off the frame that you just weld in. It's really a pretty simplistic job. It's not that involved. It's more time consuming than anything. I think we've done one in the shop and with the exception of the transmission stuff and everything, as far as getting the front all set up, it takes maybe four or five hours to do. So So do you do anything with the bo valve body or do you switch out any no. harnesses or do you do anything internal with the trans to make it a four wheel drive? Other um, than just the tail just shaft. Just the tail shaft and the tail housing. The other thing though is you do have to go back and retune your TCM because it's going to freak out when you stick the transfer case in low range because your TCM that's in the truck from the two-wheel drive is not going to recognize low range so it may throw a range shift inhibited but if you retune and reflash the TCM you'll be fine. So what do we do when you have to install the speed sensor harness? Where do you find that? Um, again you could get it off a donor truck, a four-wheel drive donor truck in, in this case, we have the wiring diagrams. I just get the pigtail ends and I make up our own harness. 
just like I did on the Wife Max for you guys. So basically, in a nutshell, it's tail shaft on the two-wheel drive Allison. Then it's a transfer, transfer case. case. Yep. It's the harness. Yep. Uh, TCM retune or reprogram. Correct. And then we're talking about a front differential, obviously, with CV shafts. Yep. And the change your hub and wheel bearings out on the end. And change the hub and wheel bearings yes. on the ends. Yep. That's it. That's it. There's really not much to it, guys. So if you are building this truck and you're already down this far and you want to go ahead and convert a two-wheel drive to a four-wheel drive, yeah, I said that's it. I, that's not easy. Obviously, it's not easy if you've never done it before. But as far as explaining it, guys, I think that's the best way to explain it while we have the cab up in the air. But, Mark, I appreciate your explanation on that. That's really yeah, you cool. Bet. Yeah, and as far as the cab goes, the only other thing we got to do, and you can probably oh, see good. it on ours, is we've got... From the factory they got that thing imprinted on the bottom of the cab again it makes it easy because we've got it in the air but uh we just uh, got up in there smoked it he took a sheet metal bit on an air chisel and we just cut that open and then fine tuned the corners with an air saw um we're doing a floor shift transfer case because actually if you could see the inside of this truck it is uh it is wide open on the floor so it's going to just be a simplistic clean deal when it's all said and done so that's basically the gist of exactly how he did it at his shop. So I want you guys to do me a solid. Leave in the comments below, would it be worth your effort? Would it be worth your time and money to do a conversion if you had a two-wheel drive truck and you wanted to convert it to a four-wheel drive? I'd love to read them. As far as I'm concerned, everybody's different. Like I have the ability, I can weld brackets, um, I can outsource parts, but I would have to get, at the end of the day, a donor truck. Now it could just be a chassis with drivetrain. But for some of you guys that don't have the ability, for example, you don't have the room at your house, or you're just not really that mechanically inclined, you don't know how to use a welder. As far as I'm concerned, guys, if you have a two-wheel drive truck, it wouldn't be worth your effort. I think if anything, sell that truck, get a four-wheel drive truck and build that. I don't know. Really worth the fuss and the time and the money. I don't know. Just let me know. I'd love to read it. And then one more thing, guys, definitely check out my website, truckmasterdiesel.com. I'll leave that link in the description. If you guys want to support the channel, if you're deciding to upgrade parts whatsoever, I think this would be a great way to do it. And of course, guys, I always do free shipping. I try to keep the prices as low as possible. But hey, that's it. If you guys enjoyed the content, make sure you subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching as we continue to post these awesome videos. We'll see you on the next one. Stay tuned.